Hey, Betty, greetings. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. So it's, uh, yeah, it's last but not least, right? You were ending the business transformation stage, right? And uh, and yes, and actually the, the, the goal is really to talk, you know, from the road of open banking to embedded finance. And you were one of the first, you know, uh, like I think 10 years, almost nine years ago to 10, call 11, it. yep. 11 years, actually. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I knew you uh, later having the open bank project. So you are maybe one yeah. of the first to kind that term, at least to buy a domain with open and bank in the same name. So yeah, so <laughs> it's really 11 years of of uh, of, uh, of knowledge and vision that uh, that we're gathering here for a talk enti entitled "Embedding Static and Dynamic APIs Here, There, and Everywhere." Thank you very much, Simon, to be there with us. Are you able to share your screen? Yeah, let's see. I click this button. I press share. And when you uh, oh, now I uh, okay. <clears throat> now I was told I have to hide something. Oh, I have to hide this down here. Okay, and then I show my screen. Got it? That that's perfect. The stage is yours. And Super duper. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, Mehdi, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, good to see you again. And hello, everybody, wherever you are in the world. I suppose some of you are in London. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a Londoner myself, actually, but now living in Berlin. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, CEO of Tisobi and founder of the Open Bank Project. So a um, little bit about the origins of uh, Open Banking stroke Open Bank Project. So uh, as, uh, as Mehdi was just mentioning, I gave the first talk uh, to um, an EUIT conference back in February 2010. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's ten that's ten or a bit more bit more years uh, uh, since since we started um, uh, Open Bank Project. And you can see this funny little slide on the left uh, is uh, that was our first uh, kind of logo uh, and our first. This was one of like eight 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 use cases actually. So this this one is sending payments uh, and all the good stuff is there, OAuth and all that uh, good stuff, yeah? And um, we said that there will be four or five O's in open banking, so we wanted open APIs for every bank uh, based on open standards and using open source, uh, promoting open data and transparency, and this leads to open uh, innovation, yeah? And when, when I first started talking about it, it was a bit like back in 1995 when uh, companies said, well, why do we need a website? And then by 2000, of course, we got a website and we're coming up to, we're in 2020 now and many banks have got uh, 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 APIs by now, yeah? So, so, so that's a result, uh, as we would say. Uh, and why? Well, customers are changing their behavior uh, ever faster. Uh, um, uh, yeah, numerous examples. Just look at your kids or your friends' kids. You know, it, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, there are lots of competitors coming in who want to eat the bag, the bank's uh, lunch, as it were. Regulation is coming to a country near you if it hasn't uh, already done so. So we're we're be, we're working with regulators around the world who are interested in or bringing regulation to their. To their uh, to their countries, and of course, APIs are good just for good technical reasons to to make a slip more slippery surface on top of uh, of core banking systems. So we're hearing more and more about open finance. Is there a difference between open banking and open finance? Well, I, I wouldn't say so. Actually, not not in our original vision. So in version two of our APIs, we already had create customer, get FX, uh, KYC APIs, create products. So that could be a mortgage product, create branch, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a kind of semantic, semantic difference. And we provide now a stack of, uh, we pro provide a middleware platform basically, which provides 300 plus APIs out of the box. Uh, it's been used by many banks all around the world, and we have a large uh, developer community. So what does embed mean? Well, embed really means, uh, uh, 
you know, putting the financial services, the data and services in places where you wouldn't expect, a bit like the Heineken advert, you know. We, and we like to use that phrase with open source software. So open source gets uh, places other software uh, doesn't get. And, and I think we, we're going to see this, and Paul Rohan, you know, makes this point very, very well, that the, the data and services of the FI are going to appear under different brands. You know, so I was talking to uh, a colleague this morning, Luca, uh, and he was saying, well, what about, you know, Coca-Cola? Say they want to, they want to start uh, um, uh, selling financial services. Why not? They've got a big uh, customer base. Of course, you know, they can do that. Uh, uh, so we maybe we'll see uh, uh, Coke bottles consuming APIs at some point. Why not? Yeah. And it's also about embedding a culture of APIs everywhere within the uh, uh, financial uh, institution. So and, and that's approach we take with Open Bank Project. So everybody, everything's got to be an API. Uh, every feature we, 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 we produce and create is used and consumed uh, or produces APIs. Um, and uh, yeah, people get into trouble if they do any database access, basically, that's, that's it. So APIs everywhere. And also, you've got to embed uh, within your uh, organization, uh, yeah, different things. It's not just about technology, right? Open banking, open finance is not uh, just about technology. So there's the four, four or five O's that I mentioned before. So open access, open data, uh, open standards and open source. What does open access mean? It means, you know, um, make it very easy to consume these APIs. Uh, um, obviously, with uh, real customer data, there have got to be lots of checks and balances, but sandboxes and so on should be very, very quick and easy to, to get to. All the documentation should be public and and uh, and online and easy, 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 easy free access. So you want the 15-year-old kid uh, and the uh, eighty-year-old grandmother to to be able to consume these uh, APIs, but there's also more. Uh, and in uh, API Days Hong Kong, I gave a talk about and I used this yin and yang uh, um, uh, kind of analogy. So you know, organize, organizations have got to be still. You know, um, what does that mean? It means. Um, being like sensing the future, uh, being aware of the changes that are going ar ar around them, um, uh, being generous, being 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 open-minded, yeah. And then on the other on the other hand, on the more yang side, you've got to be connected. You've got to be, uh, as Paul Rowan talks about, you've got to really treat your treat your developers as you would your customer, yeah. Um, and um, and then at the same time you've got to be you've got to be active you've got to you've got to be thinking agile maybe money, maybe running uh, hackathons you definitely want to uh, welcome uh, edge players so in some of our early hackathons we had we had people there who are now uh, CEOs of banks and uh, and running uh, their own API companies and so on and so forth. So, you know, banks should should be open to 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 get in touch with the kind of a little bit uncomfortable maybe or or or, or non-standard. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the ways they can do that is is through API sandboxes and just like using this Tai Chi. Uh, uh, analogy again. There's something in Tai Chi called pushing hands, where you practice with each other, and you, you're not, you know, you're not killing each other, but you're going through the motions a bit. And this is this is one thing that uh, API sandboxes can can be uh, really useful uh, to to test out the partner, see what they got, see how they can use your APIs, um, and kind of get into bed with each other, but not uh, not uh, not don't don't take your clothes off just yet type thing and and then of course you're going to use these apis to 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 go into battle uh and build lots of uh, services uh on, on top of them um and uh, an open bank project can help with that so we're a restful api platform and i think that the, the simplest way to sum it up is uh, it, Everything, everything is a REST API. Yeah, there's a there's a catalog that started with um, 
um, yeah, so access to access to accounts and this kind of original kind of uh, core open banking thing. Um, but already, right in the first early versions, we had, for instance, metadata, right, which is not considered to be part of the traditional or the UK open banking or or Berlin Group open banking and so on. And uh, we had uh, um, we have uh, like branches and ATMs and, and that kind of thing, but also onboarding and KYC and, and products, so where you can. D define uh, define like mortgage project uh, pro pro products uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and so those would what those are what we would call the kind of standard entities uh, with within open bank project but there are also so our approach has been to like to take a kind of simple uh, set of of data so really the, the, they started off with like the information that a customer would want would expect to see from their bank account but what happens if a bank has like different information that they want to be to make to be made available uh, over the API perhaps some custom fields uh, fields which are unique to the 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 financial in, in institution so then we can add uh, what we call custom attributes to the standard entities yeah um, and they're returned within the within the same uh, a, a, a API uh, endpoints and then to go further, say we want to add something completely different, we can add dynamic entities. So an entity is a bit like a database table. You can create it on the fly, and I'll show that to you. Show this in, in, in a minute to you. Uh, uh, you can create the entity and define the fields, uh, and then you can like link these uh, these different entities to your standard entities. So maybe to your customer uh, entity uh, and, and so on. So this is a really a rich way to build up quickly build up different data that you want. Uh, maybe a new app or new service to interact with. Yeah, um, and then of course dynamic endpoints. So what's the difference between a dynamic entity and a dynamic endpoint? Well. When we create a dynamic ent entity, we're creating the CRUD, the create, read, update, and delete uh, endpoints. And when we create the dynamic endpoint itself, we're actually actually uploading uh, a Swagger file, <coughs> uh, uh, or Open API spec a Swagger file, and then <coughs> you know uh, those APIs uh, return uh, either mock data or connect through to to to, to real data uh, in, in the back end so a little bit a little bit more about that so standard entities are these common things like accounts transactions uh, metadata products and so on and so forth um, and then there are also things like consents uh, which are used in for, for instance in berlin group and uk and obp uh, apis <clears throat> and these are all uh like you get this from any open bank project instance you get these uh this working so that uh your uh you know your uk endpoints are going to work your berlin group endpoints are going to work and of course your open bank project uh, endpoints are going to work uh, straight straight out of the box and you can store the data uh, locally <clears throat> so uh yeah we're sometimes asked to show a uh, data model so this is the data model uh of the um, of, of the standard uh, entities, you can see all sorts of good uh, open uh, finance uh, stuff there as well. So cards and uh, account applications, uh, FX, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah? um, and then <clears throat> custom attributes, as I mentioned, they are linked to some of our standard uh, entities. They're typed key value pairs. So in other words, you could store, I don't know, say you want to store the uh, number of mobile phones a customer has access to or the m mobile phone, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, serial number or something like that. Then you can add this to, 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 uh, uh, to a certain entity that, uh, that, that already exists. Then dynamic entities, uh, as I mentioned, are uh, a bit like database tables, but you can have these reference field reference fields to other uh, other um, existing types hold on just making sure I can see my clock um, okay 14 minutes <coughs> gone and um, yeah you automatically get uh, these endpoints and automatically we create roles what we call roles 
uh, so that um, you can grant uh, access to these uh, 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 different different endpoints. And uh, we've recently gone through this pro process with a with a large bank and been pretty successful in modeling the uh, internal uh, um, the data model. Uh, and uh, we've even got to the point where you can create your own bank and then you can be the kind of master of this bank. So you have a whole kind of data uh, yeah, realm under this, under this one bank that, that, that a certain uh, group of people can, 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 can control. And then dynamic endpoints are, you know, grab a swagger file, uh, go to the, uh, then use an endpoint to create more APIs uh, based on based on this uh, swagger file. Each endpoint automatically uh, inherit it gets roles that uh, that are needed for it, etc., uh, etc. Et ah, and then these endpoints uh, are immediately available in the API Explorer. So maybe I can jump out into uh yeah uh the uh, api explorer i got here so this is on our sandbox so you can go to this api explorer dot uh and we've got a bunch of uh all endpoints are listed down here to to the left and for instance we've got the uh, dynamic endpoints we can create uh, this is where we manage them uh, and then we can we can create a dynamic entity. So maybe I just create a, uh, a dynamic entity uh, uh, as we speak. So it shows a lot of uh, reference. So I mentioned these reference fields. So these these are other dynamic uh, entities which have been created. Um, and so yeah, let me just create one. So we'll call it. Uh, COVID API days, it's an unfortunate name, right? But then we can have a field called, I don't know, uh, Y uh, or reason. Let's call it reason. And uh, let's say, I uh, haven't, haven't tried, uh, I don't know. I might undo this a little bit because I haven't seen, uh, haven't tried all those, but let's say, okay, COVID. Uh, days. All right. So this is going to be. We're going to create a new, uh, a new dynamic entity based on this example. So I just uh, did. Uh, so here's the name. Here's one of the fields. Uh, <coughs> we've got we, we've got the other fields here. And then um, if I refresh this page, um, then we should be able to see <coughs> the new endpoint set of endpoints down here. So here's one I did earlier. Here's the one I just did. And now I can create records under that. Yeah. So I can, uh, I can, uh, let's say we'll, we'll, we'll create a, a record in this database for, in this table for, for Medi. Ah, now I need to, I don't have the role for that yet. So, Let's let's grab that role for me. Um, API sandbox. I'm using a brand new Mac, by the way, which is very lovely. Um, here's the API manager, um, and we generate entitlement requests. And hold on, how's my clock going? Oh. 20 minutes. Mm. Let's see. Uh, I want to request this entitlement. Then uh, let's see if I can refresh this page. <clears throat> We've got rather a lot of stuff in here, I guess. Ticking away. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the role I just requested. I'll, uh, I'll accept it and then hopefully I can come back here and um, post this record. Okay, so now I've created this, this record and of course I could uh, yeah, get, 
get get the list. So I'll, I'll get this list that I, I used earlier. Uh, hold on. Um, yeah, because I don't have to create another another <clears throat> another role. Uh, and you know, and here's 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 the value. So a very quick way that you can model uh, important things uh, within your within your financial institution, and and link these entities to uh, to existing or more uh, yeah like more obvious um, banking uh, data and so on and so forth. So let me just switch back to my presentation. Um, yeah, so everything is available in the API Explorer because the API Explorer is a dynamic thing. Uh, it's uh, it's getting the API definitions on the fly, so no importing manually or anything like that. Similarly, the manager gets everything on the fly, so the roles are on the fly, etc. Um, we have Open Bank Bank Project is always connector driven, so you can send the messages through to different backend systems. For instance, we have a, a Node Red adapter uh, to do that. Uh, this shows that OBP is uh, is kind of microservice ready in a sense that you can run different uh, sections of your your services on different uh, OBP uh, instances. Um, now, to be embedded, you you might want to use lots of different different types of authentication uh, flows and so on and so forth. Uh, and we we support these that are the, these are on screen both external with Google uh, or local and uh, and obviously we support the the UK and the Berlin Group um, uh, and OBP uh, consent flows and so on so on and so forth like that. So um, so to take another Tai Chi uh, phrase, you know, embed APIs and repulse the monkey. Yeah. And now, no, uh, no um, demo from Berlin would be complete without a little bit of techno music. So, um, just two seconds, uh, and I will play some. <laughs> So here we have some uh, some techno music. I guess you can hear that, and we have a response from the API because we have some embedded APIs and a music uh, software, and you can hear the that second thing is uh, is the API. Uh, Kind of, uh, yeah. Call, we're calling the API, and then we are getting the response. So 201, 200, 400, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that's playing the bassy notes. Yeah. So okay, let me just come back. There we go. Uh, so yeah, what what was happening there was that we were, um, yeah, we have some music software which which uh, speaks uh, APIs, and so we've embedded the Open Bank project uh, 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 APIs into this uh, music software, and the uh, and the music software is doing pitch uh, detection, calling the API, and then based and then the, the response code. Is um, is call it, is making a sound on another synthesizer. So, the the takeaway there is that uh, you know you can put REST APIs uh, anywhere. So why not put your financial institutions APIs anywhere? That's it. All right. And Mehdi, are you there? I think that was twenty minutes or so. Of course I'm there. Of course I'm there. Yeah. Thank you very cool. much. For we have time for really, uh, we have only two minutes for the questions, but thank you for okay. uh, all of this. Uh, one question I, I have uh, is 11 years of pushing for open banking, uh, yeah. right? Banks being more open. Let's say, what did you, what what did go faster than you thought? What did go slower than you thought? But maybe start with the faster than you thought. Good point. What went faster? Um, well, I think, I think what has gone faster, Mehdi, is like the like the adoption. You know, uh, that's 
like the kind of worldwide adoption of of, of open banking, right? I mean, uh, I, I always envisaged it to be kind of uh, uh, yeah a worldwide thing, but I didn't think that regulators would jump on it so quickly, actually. Yeah, and then the things that have gone slower. So uh, yeah, I mean, an original part of open bank bank project is financial transparency, right? And I would. I would like I, I would like to see some more of that. Uh, so actual open, properly open bank accounts for government, you know, where taxpayers' money is concerned. And then I suppose the other thing that's gone slower is I mean we're doing good business, right? But I didn't I didn't in, I, I didn't think there would be quite so many competitors, you know, which is <laughs> so no, as, yeah. We're, as we say in the startup space, right? Too early, too early, too late. You know. That's uh, yeah. that's, timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's about yeah, timing. Yeah, yeah. It's also the same yeah. for avocado maturity. So just so you know, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah no, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, regulatory uh, regulators adopting and pushing for it was faster than you expected. Competition yeah. was faster than you expected. Uh, but let's say, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. But also maybe. Uh, so what were what were going too slow actually? Maybe the bank mindset or. Mm. Uh, I mean, I suppose a bit people using our technology, right? But that's understandable. We've been a small company and we've been, you know, growing, growing gradually. And, you know, uh, but I guess patience just pays off, basically, right? So, we, you know, we've, uh, our software is getting, getting, uh, uh, you know, getting, getting used, widely adopted. So that's, that's cool. Um, I guess, yeah, the slow thing would just be, yeah, the transparency uh, thing, I would say. Um, I mean, banks are slower than you could have ever imagined, right, to, 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 to work with. I mean, they're hu huge uh, organizations, you know. I mean, sometimes they move fast, but generally they move uh, pretty, pretty, pretty slowly, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, it's really in insightful there. Uh, uh, to see also, uh, what about the standard? Did you see the standards uh, happening too? The standards happening too yeah. fast? Too fast? Uh, no, I wouldn't say they happened too fast. I mean, they also took they also took took, took a while, right? Um, um, I mean, I guess I guess what, what's what's a bit different is that you know, like. So, so many people have seen open banking as a reason to make money, right? And uh, <clears throat> of course, you can't you can't blame everybody for that, right? But um, I wonder sometimes if the yeah <clears throat> yeah I, I would I would like to see more kind of you know societal benefit, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So open but, banking, open banking went faster. Transparency went slower. I wouldn't say transparency went slower, and and I think it's all actually it's all part of the game plan, really. <laughs> you know, in a sense that, like now the banks can't they couldn't kind of uh, complain or they couldn't say oh we can't do it right because they now hold they they now have a lot of API infrastructure, you know, and uh, so I think we're ready to have more transparency. Um, yeah. So so that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Simon. We need to wrap You're up. It. We're really past, yeah. uh, past the time. Thank you for being yeah. there uh, uh, again over all, all, all these years and still pushing yeah. for. Uh, I'll ask you to uh, uh, to un, you know unshare your screen and to join us on uh, and to join us on API Day special chat. That will be where we'll be hanging out right now. Uh, okay. You, you, can, you can see in the chat. Uh, you can go on the special chat. And you can uh, actually hang out with others in a in a world where we cannot physically meet, but you will okay. see. It's, so it's, it's really fun. Which great? There's which two. which 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 uh, which? Where do I click to go to there? In the There's chat a... page, right on the right, yeah. you have event stage, uh, uh, you know, and ah. uh, room, and there is a special chat slash s slash API days, and I invite everybody uh, who is still there and still have the time. 
right? And who wants okay. to engage with uh, some speakers and attendees and sponsors, right? Uh, the drinks are on you because uh, you are at home. <laughs> uh, you are at home, but at least that will be some some moments we can share having a discussion, right? So uh, uh, yeah, uh, so I invite uh, the people who want to 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 join us on special chat. It's live. It's the, and we also have a DJ. We have a live DJ, and oh, you will cool. see. You will see that it's special, special chat. So the closer you're to the DJ, the further you hear less. And it's the same for people. If you want to discuss with people, you have to be close. If you want to listen to other people, you go in another group. And so, yeah, it's managed quite well. So I invite everybody to, to join. And uh, we will also join us tomorrow, 9 a.m. GMT for day two, where we'll talk a lot more about insurance. So not only just banking, that was really a focus today, but not more about finance and insurance, especially, uh, right? And we also on the technical track, we'll talk a little bit more about architecture and uh, let's say how to be more resilient with the uh, microservices, right? So yeah, mm. I invite you to join me on special chat right now and I will stop the broadcast and uh, don't hesitate to, uh, cool. uh, uh, yeah, to have fun with us. I'm